So today we're going to begin to talk about uh, the nitty-gritty details of photosynthesis and in this particular case uh, we're going to start with the light reactions. So I'm going to say light reactions there of photosynthesis by discussing um, a component of the light reactions which is non-cyclic electron flow. But before we get into that I want to just um, get us oriented so that we know you know in where what we're talking about. So I'm going to just draw, sketch out a chloroplast here, really rough. Um, and you'll remember that uh, inside the chloroplast are these, hopefully you know what I'm going to call these, uh, thylakoid discs that are all stacked in grana. And so um, the light reactions basically take place in the thylakoid membrane. And so we're going to be looking, uh, zooming in into that thylakoid membrane, and that's where we find our photosystem. So you'll remember that we have two photosystems, photosystem 2 called P680 and photosystem 1 called P700. And so we're about to take a look at each of those, um, but you'll remember that a photosystem really is just, um, if we were just to take this little zoom in piece here and look at it, all that a photosystem is is just um, we have our chlorophyll A molecule and a bunch of other little uh, antenna pigments that are going to direct photon energy towards chlorophyll A and that energy is going to be used to help it promote some electrons to a primary electron acceptor. Uh, and so we're going to revisit that idea when we talk about an on-cyclic electron flow in just a minute, but we're going to get into a little bit more detail than we did in the last lesson. So stay tuned. So what I'd like you to do, and this is just a good strategy that I want you to remember and maybe put to work next year when you're navigating some of these biology concepts and new biology concepts on your own, is to just not feel overwhelmed by a diagram that has a lot of detail, but just to stop and break it down. Because I think more times than not, we've been able to successfully accomplish that task when we've just slowed it down a bit and tried to break the diagram down into smaller pieces instead of trying to see it as one big chunk. So I'm going to encourage you to pause the video right now. Okay, so there are a number of things that I'm hoping that you noticed when you paused the video. And one of them is that you can see clearly that there's photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. I'm hoping you that you then remembered that photosystem 2 was P680 and photosystem 1 was P700. I'm hoping that you remember that that 680 and the 700 refers to the wavelength of light best absorbed by the chlorophyll A molecule that happens to be in each of these reaction centers, right? Uh, some other things I'm hoping you noticed, I'm hoping you noticed that um, light was obviously a part here and that we can see that that light is going to get absorbed by our antenna complexes bouncing around until it reaches our reaction center. Uh, at which point, uh, if there's enough energy, electrons from our reaction center chlorophyll A molecule will be promoted to our primary electron acceptor. So really this primary acceptor here is just our PEA that we referred to in the last lesson. So when I spoke to you about um, there being an electron transport chain in the light reactions, this is one such electron transport chain. And so you can see that it's basically all an electron transport chain is a, a sequence of molecules or electron carriers that are in a particular sequence and electrons get sort of transfer, transported, hence the transport chain, um, along those uh, series of electron acceptors. And at each point, um, that electron is moving to an, you know, um, an increasingly electronegative molecule. Uh, the whole concept behind this is that that's going to generate some energy that can be used to eventually synthesize ATP. Uh, and we're going to also, at the end of this, we're going to allow those electrons that are being transported to become a part of our NADPH molecule by reducing NADP+. So our earlier conversation centered around, well, what was the point of our light reactions, the point of the light reaction was, hopefully you're remembering, 
pr produce ATP to fuel the Calvin cycle as well as NADPH to fuel the Calvin cycle. Both of those are going to get utilized. So this is simply the process by which that happens down to the details. Okay, so um, let's get down to it. So we already know about what happens in our photosystems, right? Electrons eventually get excited enough and get promoted to an electron acceptor. We can see that each of the, uh, that the same type of thing is happening in both photosystem two and photosystem one. Um, but there's sort of a sequence of events here. So you can imagine that when P680 gets excited enough and its electrons get promoted to our primary electron acceptor, that leaves an electron hole in P680. And that electron hole needs to get filled again. And so how that happens is that we have a, what's called a Z protein that's going to take our water molecule and break it down. And in so doing, it, we get the two electrons that are going to fill the hole in P680. Now there are a couple of other things that are going to happen at the same time because when we split water we end up with products. So the first product is a couple of hydrogen ions and they're going to remain, they're going to end up being in the lumen, the interior part of the thylakoid, and then we release oxygen as a waste product. So thinking about the overall um, equation of photosynthesis, right, you'll remember that we have CO2 plus H2O going to make eventually our glucose, I'm just going to write sugar and oxygen. And so here what we've seen is we've seen, all right, well, there we used the water, we split the water using our Z protein, and we produced molecular oxygen. So there we can see that in those very first stages of this uh, electron transport chain. Okay, I think we should probably write some of this down, so let's, let's do that. Okay, so as I mentioned, we have a photon that's, uh, here's our photon of light that's going to strike our photosystem too, and uh, the, its energy is going to get bounced around through its, the antenna complexes, eventually reaching P680, exciting an electron, um, and promoting it to the primary electron acceptor. Now, eventually we're going to end up with two electrons being promoted um, and that's going to begin our electron transport chain. Now, what happens next is that our excited electron is going to be captured by our primary electron acceptor. Um, and then, uh, in this case, that happens to be plastoquinone, so PQ. Uh, sometimes you'll see it being given other names, but plastoquinone is the name here. Um, and then, you know, just as we saw in cellular respiration, we're going to see those electrons being transported uh, to other electron carriers each time releasing energy. Um, right, you'll remember that when an electron is transferred to a more, to a more unstable compound, to a more electronegative atom, or molecule, then that atom or molecule becomes more stable and thus releases energy. And uh, in this case, that energy is being used to pump hydrogens into the lumen of the thylakoid. Um, just to remind you, right, in the thylakoid, the inner part is called the lumen. All right, so um, th that excited, those excited electrons are being shuttled through our electron transport chain, eventually reaching P700, okay? Uh, I'm going to, in an effort to kind of make sure we can still see this diagram, I'm going to just shrink things a little bit here, okay? Uh, and then we'll write a little bit more down. So, um, let me see here. So, photon striking P680, check. Excited electron captured by PQ, check. Um, electron passes through the PQ cycle producing ATP as electrons release uh, energy in a series of redox reactions, check. Just to remind you, that's all that's happening here because remember, each time we have electrons moving, being accepted, remember gaining an electron means reduction and losing an electron means oxidation. So each substance in this electron transport chain is being first reduced when it gains an electron and then oxidize as it loses it to the subsequent 
uh, complex in the electron transport chain. So that's what we talk about when we say it's a series of redox reactions because each substance is being reduced and then subsequently oxidized and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, and that is repeated for that second electron as we just talked about. Now, what I haven't talked about yet is photosystem one. Now, it, unlike cellular respiration, we have photosystem two and photosystem one photoexcited at the same time. So just as P68 is promoting its electrons, so is P700. So the role of the electrons that are being transferred from P680 to PQ to B, uh, B6F complex to PC, their role is to fill the hole in P700. Just as water being split by the Z proton uh, protein was able to fill the hole in P680. Okay, so electrons leave P680 and go and fill the hole in P700 because meanwhile, P700's electrons have been excited, been, uh, been absorbed by a different primary electron acceptor, ferrodoxin this time, and then eventually to NADP reductase, an enzyme responsible for reducing NADPH, or NADP plus to NADPH. I think it's time to write a little bit more down. Okay. So let's just summarize and we'll go back. So two events are happening right now that are really important. I'm going to just cover some of this up so it's not overwhelming. Okay, um, so remember the two electrons that we're talking about here are the two electrons transferred from P680. Okay, we have the Z protein that splits our water molecule, right? Well, let's remember what is happening to each of these, right? Our water gets split. Oxygen becomes metabolic waste in a product of photosynthesis that um, us, um, anybody undergoing cellular respiration will appreciate being produced. Um, our hydrogens are going to stay in the lumen and those two electrons are doing what? They're filling the hole in P680 because P680's electrons have been promoted. Okay. So there you have it, two electrons are going to fill the hole in P680. Our half of a water molecule is going to combine with another half of, or sorry, our half of an oxygen is going to combine with another half oxygen once we split um, another water molecule, and that's going to form O2. And, uh, and then we're going to have our H plus uh, remaining in, uh, in our chloroplast specifically in our thylakoid space or in the lumen. Okay, now another point to remember is that the proton pump is going to move four hydrogen ions from the stroma to the thylakoid space for every electron pair that is traveling uh, through this electron transport chain. So, um, you know, remember again, I've got my chloroplast and I've got my thylakoid and so we have a, the function of the electron transport chain is to create another electrochemical gradient, just as we saw in, um, in cellular respiration. So that pump is going to start moving hydrogen ions into the lumen uh, of our thylakoid disc. And so again, the ratio is four hydrogens for every electron pair, so for every two electrons. Uh, so, you, you know, t I want to kind of juxtapose this with cellular respiration, okay, because in cellular respiration, we would have been talking about um, the mitochondrion, and we would have had, instead, we would have had hydrogens pumped into the uh, the, um, the space between our intermembrane space, and that would result in H plus buildup in our intermembrane space. But what we see in the chloroplast is a little bit, is the opposite direction where our hydrogens instead are being pumped into the thylakoid space. So what I would suggest to you at this point is that you remember the sequence of electron carriers that we just saw in non-cyclic electron flow, uh, beginning with P680. You could almost create little flashcards for yourselves of some description or, um, you know, create little boxes. Uh, so, you know, just remembering the sequence of events. So, you know, 
what do we have from P680 all the way to at the other end here where we end up with NADPH, right? What are the sequence of pieces in between? That would be a good thing for you to think about and to uh, and try to work try to work to memorize. So let's finish off today's lesson by talking about P700. So as I said before, meanwhile, uh, as P680, everything's happening with P680, it's getting, you know, water split, electrons are being promoted and traveling to PQ to B6F to PC. At the same time, the electrons in P700 are also being excited. It's a whole other photosystem um, where energy from photons is being directed towards chlorophyll A and uh, electrons are getting excited and promoted. So, um, but the electron, the primary electron acceptor for P700 is a molecule referred to as ferredoxin. And so, you know, the sequence of events there are ferredoxin, and then the electron gets transferred to NADP reduxase, which as you can tell from the ending there is an enzyme, and that's used to reduce NADP uh, plus to NADPH. So, um, so there we have it. So again, what is the point of, uh, of this water molecule, molecule being split? Well, to fill the hole in P680. Uh, what is the point of the electron transport chain here? Well, primarily to create energy that will eventually um, some pump some hydrogen ions into the lumen and to fill the hole in P700 because P700 will have promoted its electrons and then they have been used to eventually reduce NADP plus to NADPH, right? So uh, that is it for non-cyclic electron flow. We will talk about cyclic electron flow um, in a day or so. Um, so try to, your job today is to try to memorize the sequence of events P680, to PQ, to B6F, to PC, to P700, to ferredoxin, to NADP reductase, um, to NADPH, and then we're done. Uh, so give that a whirl, see how you do. We'll do a warm-up tomorrow and, uh, and see where you are with this.